Okay, let's look at this problem. I promised you guys we will look at what is wrong with this problem. Log base 6 of 2x equals to log base 6 of x minus 3. Okay, first of all, we notice the log is on both sides. And they both have the same base, which is 6. All right, so that means we can use the property of equality for logs. And we can just basically, uh, what I had some of you guys do, is just to cross them out. Okay? That leaves up with 2x equals x minus 3, which we can solve by subtracting x from both sides and end up with x is equal to negative 3. So it looks like we have an answer. And that should be it, right? Wrong. This is the problem. Let's see what happens when we substitute x equals to negative 3 back into the original equation. When we do that, this is the original equation. We'll go ahead and put a negative 3 wherever x is, and we'll see on both sides we're going to end up with the log base 6 of 6. Let me go ahead and clean this up before we get into that. So, it looks so far so good, right? Nope, we still got to come up with what these is, what the log base 6 of Negative 6 is. That's the problem. What is the log base 6 of negative 6? What is that? So what we usually do, uh, we will take this log here. Oops, that's not how you make it. Let's see, let me clean this up. All right. Let's uh, take the log base 6 of negative 6, and let's see what happens if we take it and we rewrite it as an exponential expression. Okay, the log base 6 of negative 6. Okay, if we rewrite that, let's say we said that was equal to some number. We don't know what it's equal to. Because if we could, then we could solve this. So let's find out what that is. If we take it and write it in exponential, we got to circle the 6, raise it to the power x, and get negative 6. So that means we need to come up with an answer to this expression. 6 to the power of x needs to be equal to negative 6. So the question is, what power do I raise 6 to in order to get a negative 6? And, you know, you, your first thought might be, uh, let's raise it to the negative 1 power. Well, let's see what happens if we do that. If we take 6 and we raise it to the negative 1 power, 6 to the power of negative 1, that's equal to 1 over 6. Although it's a fraction, it's not negative. It's a small positive number, but it's not negative. We need it to be uh we need to be a negative number. Well, okay, well, that doesn't work. Let's try maybe, let's see, we'll grab my eraser here. That's not an eraser. Where's my eraser? Here's my eraser right here. Let's see. Okay. How about this? How about, let me just erase this whole mess of things right there. Oops. Okay, oops. Okay, what about this? How about... 6 to the power of 0. Would that give me a negative 6? Nope. Any number to the power of 0 is 1. So now the answer is getting bigger. Because 6 to the power of 0 is actually bigger than 6 to the power of negative, well, pretty much anything. <laughs> so, um, well, then now what? We've gone as far as you can go down. We've got a zero. Is there any way that we can get a negative? Do the log base 6 of 2x on one side, and let's see the log base 6 of x minus 3 on the other. Okay, and let's cut them both off. Now, if that was a solution to our equation, we said negative 3 was a solution. That means these graphs should intersect at negative 3. One thing is they don't intersect at all. And at negative 3, what happens when x is negative 3? 
I meant x is equal to negative 3. The graphs, there is no intersection. So these graphs never touch one another. There is no answer. There is no intersection. There is no answer. So the point of me going through all this is to let you know why you must check your answers. Because if you do the math the way we talk, you'll get x is equal to negative 3. But if you graph the function, you'll see that actually that solution is not, that is not a solution to the equation. It is what's called an extraneous solution. And that's something that we're going to run into more and more as we continue to solve all different types of equations. Have a wonderful day.